Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Airgun World Magazine, Shooting Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Today's video is all about sticks. Now the stick class, for those of you that don't know, has become an incredibly important part of the HFT community over the last year. What are sticks? Well, these are the Primos Gen 2. And essentially what the stick class is HFT, but you take every shot from the sticks. No unsupported standers, no unsupported kneelers, no supported shots off slippery trees. Everything is taken from the same position from a stick. Well, why have that class? Well, it's quite simple. There's a lot of us who are struggling with bad knees, bad necks, bad backs, old age, or just don't like rolling about in the mud that want to compete in HFT and now you don't have to get up and down from a freezing cold mat in the winter or even in the summer. So the stick class is there to help everyone that needs it. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk to some stick shooters today. We're going to look at the rules. Um, we're going to look at some ways to help you improve your stick shooting. And we're also going to go to Cambridge HFT and look at assisted HFT, which is shot off of a bipod. But that's it. Welcome to Life at the Range. I hope you enjoyed the video and off we go. Okay, so what sort of rifles do you want to shoot in stick class? Well, I know many people who shoot like big heavy guns, Styres, HFT 500s in aftermarket stocks. Um, I've seen people shoot Springers. I personally like a bullpup. I like something like this, the Brocock Ghost. And you're going to be seeing this rifle a lot more on the channel. Amazingly accurate, small, compact, easy to manipulate and for me who's got a couple of like upper body problems not a lot of strength in my upper body at the moment it's absolutely perfect and i'm actually going to be using this gun shooting on the 10th of december in the prs sub 12 foot championships up at brook valley that's going to be a huge amount of fun and we will be covering it on the channel so we've got a target out here at 35 yards and how do we get good accuracy obviously put the rifle on your stick and what a lot of the top shooters do is they push forward, find some way, either with a hamster or a part of the rifle, to lock onto the stick. At the same time, grab the stick and pull back. Now, I can't remember if I loaded one, so I'm just going to double check. Fire on off. Okay, so. We've got the target downrange. As a shoot and see, let's see what we can do. Well, not a bad start. Out to the right. Now, I think I know what I'm doing. I'm canting the rifle, and that is one of the most difficult things you get within the world of sticks. When you're shooting HFT, you lock on, you rest the butt of the rifle on the ground, you grip the peg, and you can feel the rifle is upright. But there, I could feel myself leaning left, so it was pushing me out to the right. Did I load that? No. So, let's think about cant and make sure that we're not leaning over to the left. Really, this is not as easy as people think. Well, that was... That was better, it was slightly high. Okay, pretty much through the same hole. Well, slightly high, I think. Well, 
and there you go. So that is something really important. You don't want to be canting the rifle left or right when you're on the sticks because that will massively affect your accuracy. So that's me shooting sticks badly. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Maldon District Air Gun Club and we're going to show you the people who actually do this week in, week out and actually do it properly. So off to MAD we go and I really need to get some practice in with the BRK Ghost. Right, so here we have Paul, and Paul, <laughs> makes it nice and easy. Um, right, so we've got two different types of stick here. We've got the one that we're all very familiar with, the Primos Gen 3, that one is? Yes. Primos yeah. Gen 3, that one belongs to Paul. And then we've got to our, well, to our right, to their left, the new, was it the Bog? Bog Trotter. Bog Trotter. <laughs> no, 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 we're talking about the sticks, no, not the person. Right, sorry, sorry, it's the uh, Death Grip by Bog. Death Grip Infinite. Now... As you can see, you've got two huge, the, well, the difference in the actual, you know, tubes are considerable, and this will be much, much more stable than this. But on top, we've got a clamp. Now, Paul, could you actually put your rifle into that and show it? So the, the rifle's quite heavy anyway. Yeah. I don't know if you can get the West Ham badge in, Gary. <laughs> I can always get the West Ham badge in. Okay. So this clamp's really Sorry, tight. West Ham European Champion. Champions. Champions, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. You know, it's all up the hammers. Holding that without any Exactly. Now, a couple of things. Number one, even with this gun clamped in, Paul still misses virtually every target. <laughs> but within HFT or within the stick class of HFT, this is clearly illegal. Now, if we look, and we're just going to dip under. Now, this is the standard type of V that you're allowed where the rifle sits in and it's and it's not clamped. The reason that Paul has got this today is, you've, I take it you've just got them? Indeed, yeah, just bought them. Uh, I need to fit the uh, uh, yeah. to the top of the, yeah. the, top of the tripod. But exactly. I just brought over today just to try it out. Saying, uh, I know it's an illegal setup for competition, but yeah. I feel it will be a superb aid for your own in. Have you actually found that these head more heavy duty sticks are actually more stable they than the? Are. They've also got. I haven't got them um, in at the moment, but they've got spikes on. Right. Which you can turn around, and it, it, they're, they're definitely uh, a lot more stable. Yeah, I'll say because we saw uh, Simon Mini use them yeah, yeah. at the weekend, and he shot incredibly well. Yes. So uh, is it is it a case that the Primos the days are number for the Primos? Um, I don't think so. It's just that they they do wear out. Right. And they're not they're not the cheapest of ours. I mean, these are still retail about 160 quid. Right. And they, you know, if you're using them week in week out, they don't last more than a year. And how much are the uh, death grip? Um, I was a, I, I was lucky. Simon told me where to get these. I paid three five six. I think it was. Right. Uh, they've now put the prices up to four three something. Woof. Um, if you want the carbon fibre ones, which are considerably lighter than these, you're looking at close on to 600 pounds. Wow. Well, Paul, <laughs> how are you? Actually, we'll, do, we'll just stick the, uh, the mic over. Thank you right. very much. So, Paul, so you're using the Primos Gen 2, yeah. sorry, Gen 3. Um, how are you finding them? I find them okay. I could do with a, I think they should make a different wider yoke to hmm. cater for the buddy bottles. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, no, I find them very good. And what I like about the three is, they're quick detachable and I can put my chronograph on there. That's a good idea. Uh, that's what I I normally, you know, regularly change that. So yeah. That it's quick and easy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fine. Wonderful. And so you're shooting currently a 510T. Yeah, superb. Beautiful. Actually, I suppose that's one thing to think about. I would guess, I mean, these bog sticks, they're, they're considerably heavier than the Primos, aren't they? They are, yes. So maybe if you weren't quite as mobile and you were having to hump a, a fair amount of distance, maybe the Primos would definitely be the, oh, the better that, of the stick. There's nothing wrong with the Primos. It's just that um, they've got a tendency to, to wear after yeah. uh, some time. I mean, mine, um, I've had them two years and the top wobbles yeah. quite considerably at the top. Okay. I, you put that with my natural wobble. <laughs> uh, all over the place. Well, maybe the trick is to get the wobbling in sync, sync yeah. so that the, the, the stick goes one way and you go the other and you meet in the middle and then you're all happy to go. 
So here we have Paul. So he's, the rifle's resting, but he's not yeah, clamping it in. Oh, my normal win result. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes to show that the phrase all the gear, all the gear, and yeah. no idea. <laughs> Unlucky. Thank you. <laughs> now you see it done properly. There we oh, go. Right. <laughs> so here we have Paul with the Primos Gen 3, the, according to Paul, the uh, the vastly inferior <laughs> product. Although I have a set of Primos Gen 2s and I think they're absolutely lovely. And I can almost feel Paul thinking, please don't kill this, please don't kill this, please don't kill this. <laughs> Difficult target. Mm. Yeah. Unlucky. Thank you. But on the bright side, you missed it three hundred pounds cheaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's funny. I like it. That's a good way of looking at it. Thank you very much. Right, so these these very fine gentlemen are allowing me to have a go with uh, with their rifles. Another go? Yeah, I think I just pulled slightly lower. I think I need to go fractionally up higher. I like this idea of having the bipod on the front, you know, to push into the, uh, yeah. the slip. Oh, shot, Gary. Well, that is absolutely as stable as anything. Mm. That's that's really nice, and I like the immersive optics okay. as well. I currently have got the MTC. All right, uh, yeah, one. swap. So I'm going to give that a go because I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to shoot with a BRK Ghost with a prismatic based on yeah. what you were saying that these are really nice for this kind of sport. Yeah. But every every time I look through it, I prefer that now over a conventional. Uh, it's so bright and with yeah. the numbers. Well, that's beautiful. Right. Well, that was nice and stable. Let's yeah. give the old bog clamp a go. Okay. Right. Considerably heavier rifle. It's, uh, it's a Warren Edwards Alutech with uh, Tommy Bennett Akatilli uh, wooden furniture laminate on there. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Right, so I will reset this target, something that neither oh, of you uh, yeah, had to sorry, do. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not used to doing it, unfortunately. That's zero at 25. Okay, don't you? I was thinking that's very dark. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Firing off. There's an odd person in the woods. I think they call them tree gnomes. Yeah. Shrek. <laughs> Shrek bumbling <laughs> through the woods, looking for something to eat, I think. Stig of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> they say yeah. the Yeti isn't yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's on his way back to his nest. The <laughs> bears. <laughs> there you go, the call of the Yeti. They come! They come! So, here, here we have Mr. John Gray. Unlike Dorian Gray, he's not staying young or getting younger. <laughs> and down in the distance, we have the spider's web. Ooh, good shot. Was that a Absolutely shot? solid. Thank you. Look at that. So, John, got back from the World Championships, didn't manage to kill any targets like that. But uh, how did you find it? Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, Gary. It was an amazing experience. I was full of apprehension for a win. Mm. Full of nerves and apprehension, but I needn't have been. It was felt made, made, made to feel very comfortable. Yeah, friendly atmosphere as all the competitions are, and just thoroughly enjoying myself. And um, I absolutely loved it. Superb. Right. Well, let's have a look at Mr. Finlayson. <laughs> now, John killed it. Made it look easy. Made it look like it meant nothing to him. <laughs> right. Let's have a look. Yeah. As we can see, a very popular thing seems to be using the hamster to push it against the stick mm. and then pulling back from the handle gives you a lovely bit of stability Ooh. obviously not in terry's case <laughs> metal's good yeah well that's, that's, <laughs> that's a good point 
Metal is always better than nothing. Good shot, Good shot Terry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the next shot. So he got the spider's web, killed Charlotte, and now That's it. it's time to shoot the bottle. Your right, so right, again, we can see that the hand is gripped around the top of the uh, of the stick. Now, John, have you found that almost like pushing the rifle in and pulling the stick towards you is the most stable way? Yeah, yeah I use the hand to sort of push up against the stick. So I normally, although the ground's so uneven here, sloping away, I couldn't do it because I run out of leg space. But normally, I try to bring the stick so they're on a slight angle back to me, and I kind of push into them. Right. Using obviously, me, I've got the butt plug on my shoulder, so I'm not. I'm, my shoulder's doing the work, and that makes a fairly stable platform by doing that. Yeah. Um, that's that's how I do it. And the, so I don't use a hamster conventionally, only just as a guide, and to push against the sticks. Excellent. Are you going to take a second shot at this, or? Uh, yeah. Because <clears throat> the others are. <laughs> <laughs> We've just filmed Paul with his new bog sticks. Now, say so if you were watching the top of the scope there, there was no movement, there was no wobble. It certainly looked stable. Now, if we want to see wobble, let's have a look at Terry. <laughs> so again, here we have Mr. Finlayson, and you can see he's pushing into the stick. And you can actually see that the stick is leaning backwards, so that as he's pushing down, the, the weight is being pushed in and pushed down into the front legs. Oh, don't up. <laughs> we have to give allowances for Terry, you know, because he is Eight. 107. <laughs> but again, looks solid. Now, Terry, obviously we've got a tripod on the sticks. Do you always put the two at the front, or do you? I okay? always do. Do you find that more stable? I find it more stable than having one. So the correct position would be to have the two in the front in line with the target, the one behind to help balance you out, yeah. and then you almost like pushing down into the... Actually, John mentioned that. Hmm. If you have the stick coming back, then you can lean into it. If you have it too upright, it's liable to go over. But if right. you have it leaning towards you, you've got a bit more lean, which in theory gives you more stability. Perfect. So... We'll do a third one and knock it over. Excellent. <laughs> so if we don't knock it over, do you mind if I have a go with your gun? By all means. Nope. Unlucky. Well, can you, uh, we'll leave it filming. Yep, so that's sure. uh, right, What is your 45 yard aim point? One below. One, one, dot, one mil dot below. One below. Okie dokie. Thank you very much. Just give me a rusty pellet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always the best. <laughs> right, as I'm a little bit taller, let me come up a bit. Right, so, push, so push in. Oh, well done, Gary. Lovely it's shot. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Again, I've noticed, is anyone here not shooting in air arms? Um, no. Uh, no, everyone's got air arms, no, aren't they? Yeah, they're all air arms, yeah, everyone. S400s. Oh, um, yeah. Paul's got the 5. He's got the 510 tactical, tactical isn't he? Air arms. Yeah, they're all air arms, aren't they? Everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, look, I've been really lucky here. I, you know, I've knocked a few down. Um, I helped set this course so I know the ranges as these guys don't but it just goes to show how stable you can actually physically get it so it's certainly if you're thinking about getting into HFT and you know you're worried about oh we're going to you know wobbling about this is a really really good way and you can be really competitive there's a chap called uh, Darren Percival yeah um the other day he scored a 59 out of a 60 so the stick guys are getting better and better and better.
I like this lot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Cheers. here in the end. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cheers, Terry. <laughs>what they do is they're taking two shots each at each target. Okay, so here we have uh, a supported standing shot. Now, what are the rules on sticks uh, when you're taking a supported standard, John? We have to use the sticks on every shot. So if it's a supported standard, we can't use a tree like a conventional shooter would. We still have to use the sticks. So right. what we have to do is try to get as close to the tree as we can. Right. Obviously with the shape of the tree, you have to mess around with your legs and get them to fit around the tree, but we still have to use the sticks. We can't use a tree like a conventional HFT shoot. Would, would so, so we've got this big tree here and with a root. So would you essentially be touching the root with one of the legs of your sticks if yeah, you as could? as close as I can. So if, on this one, I, I would put my sticks either sort of straddle it like that, yeah. uh, bring it up and then obviously get myself lined up and try to get to as close to the tree. Obviously the shape of the tree dictates on this occasion where your, where your legs go. Normally I like two legs straight out the front and one behind. Obviously when you've got a tree, you have to compensate and end up the best you can, but right. as close to the tree as you can get it. So if it was a unsupported stander or unsupported kneeler, what is the rule with that? Um, again, we have to use the sticks, but we again, you'd be over the peg. Um, so wherever the peg is, put your sticks over it and right. uh, take it from the sticks. So everything is on the sticks. Perfect. So the question I have for you, Terry, is every now and then there'll be like a prone only target. We had one of the worlds, which I know you weren't at, but it was physically impossible for the shooter, for a stick shooter to see because you had to go through undergrowth. Um, what kind of things do call setters bring in to enable the stick shooters to, to shoot a, a target that they can't see? Uh, sometimes they put a different colour peg next to the, the original peg, yeah. which might sort of give you a bit of a clearer view. If yeah. not, you have to try and get the stick to go as low as possible, and that's the only way you can do it, really. Right. So if there is no physical way of being able to see the target, um, what would they do then? You have, you have two points. You, you score an automatic two, two points. points. As, a, as a kill. Yeah. So, which comes in handy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Hi everyone, here we are at Cambridge HFT and I'm with Benji Jones. Now, Benji here shoots this amazing, uh, what rifle is this? Uh, this is a Daystate Red Wall. Now, Benji is, say, he's a superb shooter, the Red Wolf, yeah. Um, mm. Now, we have the stick class, but Benji, you do something different, don't you? You shoot yeah. off the bipod. Yeah. yeah. How do you find that? Um, I find it much more easier than using a stick more stable lower down yeah so we're going to put this down before I drop it because I'm terrible at putting things up so why do you um why do you shoot off bipods because you've got a slight problem with your right hand yes you? you've got a little lack, yes. lack of strength yeah all right it's excellent well see that that's the great thing about using bipods and using sticks now obviously in, in major competition we use the tall sticks mm. have you ever shot off of those yeah how, Once. Did, how did you find that very difficult, <laughs> very so, difficult. So exactly the same as the rest of us, I'm yeah. terrible on sticks. But that's the thing, if you're thinking of shooting and maybe the, the tall sticks aren't good for you and you can shoot from a bipod, speak to your local club, see if they'll allow it, see if they'll be happy. Um, I think it's Lee Valley, they do like a, a, a what do they call it, it's like an assisted HFT and yeah. that where you can shoot off bipods and stuff like that. You know, but, but as we can say, you know, Benji's knocked over a couple of targets. She's doing really, really well. So, uh, absolutely brilliant. Benji, thank you so much. And, uh, and keep on shooting and keep on doing us proud.
Yeah. 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 Shop NG. Good shot. Well done, Good well shot. Done, Benji. Benji, how do you feel about that one? Good. <laughs> Good shot, mate. Not easy. Right, in assisted. We'll start with him. First time for a long time that Benji's had some competition. <laughs> All right, in third place with a 42 is Tony Woodard. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm looking at somebody what they've put down there. In second place, losing a very tense six pellet shoot off, it's Benji. And in first place is Mike with a 49. Right, so here we have Mr. Stuart Hallett. Woo, terrible shooting. Right, so Stuart. Yes, sir. Right, so. Tell me a bit about yourself. What gun are you using? How long have you been shooting sticks? Okay, shooting sticks about two and a half, nearly three years. And I use an HFT 500 Air Arms, uh, Optisan EVX scope, which I find compatible with both the gun. Yeah. And I've um, been shooting sticks and thoroughly enjoy it. Right, so you just got back from the HFT World Championships. Yes. Um, how did you find it? Uh, nerve wracking the first time, the very first day, but thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, second day, settled into it and definitely gonna go back next year. Brilliant, would you say it's a, a sport or a competition that it's uh, it's good for people to come and have a go at or was it yeah, like very yes, daunting? It's, no, it's, you think it's gonna be daunting to the worlds, but as soon as you're there and settling and you do your first couple of targets, it's absolutely blinding. People are really friendly there. Everyone's just having a great time. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a competition. If you wanna go and do it, go and do it. You should never be frightened of going to do it. I was and I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you, Stuart. No worries. So what sticks do you buy? Well, these are the Primos Gen 2s. These are my sticks. You've also got the Primos Gen 3s. They're obviously the bog clamps, which you can get, which are these huge, great, big, thick sticks. And some people, because let's face it, these are about 150, 160 pounds. The bog clamps are over 400. Some people are even using a camera tripod. Not perfect but they will give you the stability that you need. And if you think that sticks is something that you want to have a go at, maybe starting off with a, with a camera tripod is, is something you can do. I mean, these are Amazon basics. They're only like 20 pounds, but you can get much heavier tripods as you can and go down to your local uh, cash converters or your charity shop and there's often tripods in there. But the great thing about stick shooting is if you actually speak to your club that you're going to go to and say, I want to shoot sticks, but I don't have sticks, they will usually put you with a stick shooter and you'll be able to share sticks. A lot of places like doing this because that way you're not messing around setting up different sets of sticks and things like that each time. You just walk up, the first person puts their stick at the peg and then they leave them there and two or three people will use that set of sticks. Um, general rule of thumb is if you're borrowing someone's sticks or shooting with someone's sticks, the, the cost for that is usually a cup of tea after the shoot. The other thing is about modifying sticks. The other thing is about modifying your sticks to to, you know, to make them better for your rifle. What we will allow is, if you want to put a couple of little bits of foam over there to, to rest your gun on, that's absolutely fine. But what we don't want to see is people putting sandbags and bean bags and things like that, where the gun will sit within it and it will almost grip the stick. So at the moment, sandbags and things like that on top of sticks are not allowed, but we will allow a certain amount of, you know, a little bit of padding or a little bit of foam to protect your rifle. That's absolutely fine. Um, the other thing we're looking at doing in 2024 is it is only the hand that can grip. So if you're gripping the rifle 
So if you're gripping the stick like that, that's fine. What we don't want to see is people putting things on underneath to actually allow you to rest your hand on and to, stay, uh, to, to stabilize the hand to give you more stability. The only thing that you should be using to grip the stick and the rifle would be your hand. So we don't want to start seeing shelves or platforms or other bits they're designed to actually help you gain stability. The only thing that should be really holding the gun is the yoke and the hand and nothing to support the hand. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our stick video today. Um, and I hope it's just given you a, a rough guide into you know, what you need to do if you want to have a go in the world of sticks. Um, the guys who shoot it are all lovely. You know, you'll have an amazing time in the stick class. And it's something that I'm certainly gonna, gonna give a go over the winter. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll all see you on again on the range very, very soon. And take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Ta-da.